Dame i gospodo, dobar vam dan, dobro vam jutro, drugog dana kongresa Zemlja. Nadam se da vam je jučer bilo zanimljivo i tijekom dana i na večer, a i očito je dosta da su se dosta njih dobro proveli sinoć, pretpostavljam da će nam se prijaviti tijekom jutra, već sada odmah. Prvo predavanje danas otvaramo sa stranim, još jednim stranim predavačom, portugalski arhitekt, profesor João Bento, profesor na British School of Planning u Londonu. Svoj znanstveni rad fokusira na arhitektonskoj politici u raznim državama Europe. Napravit će nam jedan mali pregled, jednu panoramu i posebno se osvrnuti na primjeru Irske, na njezinu arhitektonsku politiku. Tako da, evo, molim vas, please welcome Mr. João Bento. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start uh, by thanking the organization of the Congress by the invitation to be here this morning to present some of my research findings on the role of architectural policies in the EU. More specifically, I will examine the architectural policy of Ireland and its current implementation strategy in order to build the bridge for the following roundtable on implementation. My my presentation will be structured in four parts, a brief introduction about the EU architectural policy, followed by a brief overview of the current status of national architectural policies in the different member states based on the results of European survey, which I have undertaken in 2011 in collaboration with the European Forum for Architectural Policies. After that, I will present and discuss in more detail the Irish architectural policy namely its implementation strategy and main policy outcomes. Finally, some conclusions about the progress of architectural policy in the EU and uh, lessons retained from the Irish experience. In the last 30 years, there has been a growing recognition of architecture and the importance of architectural quality for social and cultural development, health creation and economic well-being. To support this goal, several European countries have been developing architectural policies to promote spatial design excellence and to raise public awareness of the importance of architectural quality and the built environment in the unfolding of our collective life. This recognition has been incorporated in several declarations and resolutions on architecture adopted by the European institutions as well non-governmental organizations representative of the interests of the professions and the citizens. Hosting these concerns, the European Council of the EU adopted a resolution on architectural quality in urban and rural environments in February 2001, encouraging the member states to promote architectural quality and a general awareness about the value of architecture and urban design. The Council resolution on architectural quality was the first policy document in a, with a global approach uh, at, the, uh, at architecture in European level. Its adoption by the Council of Ministers of the EU represented the political recognition of the importance of architecture for the improvement of the quality of life of the European citizens. The Council resolution has broadened the European architectural agenda to include the cultural dimensions of architecture and has urged the EU member states to intensify their efforts to improve the knowledge and promotion of architecture and to promote architectural quality by means of exemplary public building policies. However, the 2001 resolution failed to embrace the emerging sustainable development agenda that would become one of the key drivers of the European urban policy in the following years, portrayed by the Leipzig Charter of Sustainable European Cities, adopted in 2007. Therefore, in 2008, the EU Council adopted a second policy document on architecture with a reinforced object and aim. The Council conclusions on architecture, cultural contribution to sustainable development, which calls on the Member States and the European Commission to take the arguments on the social potential of architecture into account and encourage no less than 17 actions. I will mention just a few. Most important is the call to make allowance for architecture in all relevant policies, especially in research, economic and social cohesion, sustainable development and educational policies. 
to encourage innovation and experimentation in sustainable development in architecture, urban planning and landscape, in particular within the framework of European policies and programs and when commissioning public works to help that the economic growth of employment, employment and potential of architecture has a creative culture industry and a number of more concrete defined actions such as research, an annual European architectural event, and measures to enhance better education and public awareness. However, like, the EU soft, like all the EU soft policies, the, these two documents are not mandatory for the member states. So basically they are guidelines uh, and they are not uh, directives. So the member states don't, they are not obliged to, to implement or follow the recommendations. In this background, uh, now I'll start the second part, the European Forum for Architectural Policies decided to carry out a survey at the European level to review and assess the impact of both documents, the Council Resolution and the Conclusion Text, by surveying the actions and political developments that the two European documents may have generated in the individual member states since its adoption. The survey covered 33 European countries, the 27 member states of the EU, uh, the four official EU candidate countries, and two reference countries, Norway and Switzerland. At the time, Croatia was still an EU candidate, uh, uh, but now uh, I have to update the map. <laughs> um, however, in Belgium and the United Kingdom, their states' regions have replied separately. As a result, the scope of the survey increased for the total of 37 correspondents. The first aspect that the survey tried to portray was which entities were responsible for the architectural policy inside the administrative structures of the member states. Does it exist a specific department in charge of architectural policy or it is a chair responsibility? We can see that in half of the, the 37 administrations survived, the architectural policy is under the responsibility of a specific department. In the other half, the architectural policy is a shared responsibility between two or more departments. In the cases where the policy is under the responsibility of a single department, the remit of that department is diverse and most of the times it includes other assignments than solo architectural policy. Nevertheless, it is possible to verify that in most cases, architecture is under the remit of culture art departments or urban development uh, town planning departments. With the exception of Spain and France, it is worth mentioning that most of these departments only started to have full responsibility for architectural policy in the last 10, 20 years, and some of the, the departments were only recently formed. This is the case, for example, of the French-speaking community of Belgium that has created the architectural division in 2007, or Hungary that has created the national chief architectural office in 2010. Looking at the location of the departments inside the different administrative structures, it is possible to observe that the majority of the departments are within the remit of the Ministry of Culture or the Ministry of the Environment and Urban Development. Only in a few countries, architecture falls within the sphere of activity of the Ministry of Public Works or the Ministry of Interior. The second aspect that the survey tried to identify was the existence of a public policy on architecture formalized in some type of official documents or a set of documents which outline the government policy on architecture. As you can observe, half of the countries survived have an official document on architectural policy. However, in the other half, 14 countries stated that they are planning to develop a policy document or are already in the final stage of approving it. Only five countries mentioned that they are not planning to develop such policy in the near future. The information on the slide and in the next slides is already updated where Croatia is marked as having a policy on architecture. Uh, if you look at the geographic distribution of the countries that have an official policy, it is possible to observe that all the northern European countries already has a policy, plus France, Croatia and Cyprus. Nevertheless, it is, spec is expected that in the, in, in the next years, 10 or 15 years, almost all member states will have a public policy on this domain. However, after analyzing the different documents collected, it was possible to verify that not all countries have the same type of policies. The survey identified three main types of policy documents. Legislation, the case of France and Sweden. Comprehensive policy, all the countries indicated in the slide. 
and or sectoral policy, Cyprus, England and Wales. If we look at the geographic distribution of the different types of policies, it is possible to observe that the, uh, the comprehensive policy, type 2, has been adopted by the majority of the countries that has a public policy on this area. Legislation has only been adopted in France and Sweden, and sectoral policies in southern Britain and Cyprus. About the first type, legislation, in the European panorama, France was the first country to approve a, a public national policy on architecture, but in the form of a national law on architecture in 1977. The French law was a very important milestone for the French architects. The first article of the law proclaimed architecture as an expression of culture and a matter of public interest, putting architectural promotion at the head of cultural policy. It also established the statutes of the French order of architects, the obligation of the architectural projects being subscribed only by architects, and the creation of the councils of architecture, urban planning and environment, CAOE. Based on the general principle of the first article of the law, architecture is a matter of public interest, several other structure followed and were established throughout the country. Uh, I will just give two examples. The Interminister Mission for Quality in Public Construction that work throughout all the sectors of the government to improve public procurement and network of houses of architecture that are spread all around the country. About the second type, the first, architectural the first comprehensive architectural policy on architecture was developed by the Netherlands in 1991, entitled Space for Architecture. The policy document led to the establishment of several cultural institutions in the following years, the Berlag Institute, the Netherlands Architectural Fund, the Foundation Architecture Local, and the establishment of more than 30 local architectural centers. The first Dutch policy started with this clear and forceful declaration. Even seeming elementary, the adoption of the architectural policy, or note, as the Dutch call it, was a very important landmark in the political Dutch context. For the first time, there was a clear understanding that architecture was not simple, simply the building of walls, roofs, doors and windows, but it was fundamentally an inviolable cultural activity. In addition to an industry that needed to be regulated, Architecture was well established as a cultural expression that deserved to be supported. Covering 1991 to 96, the document embodied a number of measures to promote good architecture and focus on the, on the role of the government as a contracting party in improving the architectural climate. Historically, the creation of the policy in, 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 in the Netherlands was pioneer in the European context and resulted from the collaborations of two ministries in the foundation of the National Museum of Architecture, the NAI, Netherlands Architectural Institute. When the NAI was established in 1988, the publication of the first policy on architecture, three years after, in 1991, served to politically frame the institute and outline the government intentions for the development of architecture as a profession and as a discipline. Since then, every four or five years, the Dutch Parliament approved a new version of the policy, in 1996, the architecture of space. In 2001, shaping the Netherlands. In 2005, spatial planning and culture. In 2009, a culture of design. And the most recent was adopted this year, entitled Building on the Strength of Design. Following the Dutch model, several European countries started to develop comprehensive policy directly addressed to architecture and urban design where the government defined the architectural frameworks and goals for subsequent implementation by the public authorities. In the table, we can see a list of uh, all the comprehensive architectural policies collected by the survey organized in a chronological order. About the third type, sectoral policies, some countries have developed national architectural policies, but not in a unique comprehensive policy document, but in specific sectoral areas, such as planning, public buildings, and heritage. Although some other countries probably also have integrated this type of concerns in similar documents, for the present survey, only three administrations, three administrations have made specific uh, reference to them. This is the case of Cyprus, England and Wales. Currently in England, this scenario does not apply anymore, where most of the sexual policies were suspended recently. Nevertheless, in the beginning of this year, 
Sir Terry Farrell has been asked by the Cultural Ministry at Vesey to undertake a new and independent review of architecture in the built environment, which will have to address the need, or not, of a national architectural policy in England until the end of this year. <coughs> Nevertheless, looking at the progression of the architectural policies in a, chronological, in a chronological perspective, now the three types together, it is possible to observe that the implementation of a public policy on architecture is still a relative recent phenomenon. For most of the countries, this is the first time they have a public policy on architecture at national level. We can also see that only five countries had the opportunity to review their policies. All the other countries still hold down to their first generation policy document. In some cases, the policy has been, submit, is, is submitted to a, has been submitted to a period of public discussion before its approval, which is the case of Ireland, Denmark, Sweden and Scotland, marked in the table with number zero. We can see that a comprehensive policy is the most common type of policy document on architecture at European level. In 20 countries that have a policy, 15 have chosen this type of model. So the following question stands up. What makes a comprehensive policy on architecture more suitable to improve the government's role in promoting design quality in architecture in the built environment than the other two options? The comprehensive policy can be described as an official policy document on the need to improve the design quality of architecture and the built environment. Oh, sorry. Basically, it differs from the other two options. Oops. Making a noise. Oh, sorry. Basically, it differs from the other two models for being more flexible than the legislative and more broader than the sexual crossing different sectors and levels of the state by including a large number of measures and initiatives and by covering non-governmental actors in their implementation programs. Although each policy has its own specific characteristic, the comprehensive policy, policy usually include principles and reasons for having a public policy in a, with a global approach on architecture, the main aims to safeguard and promote cultural and architectural quality in building urban design and cultural heritage, and for each ob objective, it includes several initiatives and instruments. Finally, it defines an implementation strategy, governance model, and coordination system, number of actors involved, and in few cases, it may also include a policy budget. However, to ensure the effective implementation of the architectural policy, it requires a good intermunicipal coordination that can guarantee a compromise between different government departments and non-governmental actors. Most of the times, the problems are identified and the solution prescribed. But to put the initiatives into actions, it's not an easy task, as it comprises allocate administrative, administrative and financial resources, delineate procedures, etc. In fact, the phase of implementation is one of the most complex phases of the policy process. In a theoretical perspective, policy implementation corresponds to the fourth phase of the policy cycle. Therefore, implementation is the stage between the approval of the policy and the consequence of the policy for the people who it affects. Mainly, implementation involves translating the goals and objectives of a policy into an operating and going program, which corresponds to the, phases, to the phase where Croatia is now. To better understand how the architectural policies work within a real-life context and the type of policy instruments used, I will briefly examine in more depth the architectural policy of Ireland. I have chosen this country because the government has started to work on a comprehensive architectural policy for almost 20 years now and have reviewed their policy twice. The first step on the adoption of an architectural policy in Ireland goes back to the year of 1996 with the publication of a, a of a public consultation document entitled Developing a Government Policy on Architecture, a, pro a proposed framework of discussion and, and, of, and discussion of issues. The first document established the basis of the architectural policy in Ireland. It explained why the government should pursue a public policy in architecture and set out the main policy prim principles and establish six main objectives. The document described the main challenges and issues considered and proposed a set of actions for each of, of, of the objectives. However, considering that it was a public discussion document, it did not establish any implementation strategy. However, six months after the conclusion of the consultation process, the government falls in June of 1997. Therefore, the new minister decided to adopt 
uh, a policy statement on architecture and establish a working group to define the, the specific policy proposals and actions. In 2000, in, in 2000, the report of the working group was submitted and finally, the first official policy on architecture in Ireland was adopted, entitled Action on Architecture 2002-2005. The policy adopted the same principles and uh, the definitions and key objectives of the, the public consultation document. It was organized in five sections and it had a strong emphasis on promoting awareness and understanding of architecture. A fifth section was dedicated to the implementation strategy, which is the focus of the discussion in the following panel. Uh, wait, sorry. Um, in, in this brief section about the implementation strategy, the government referred that the policy objective spans many areas of responsibility, are long-term and have no single resolution. Therefore, it concludes that the implementation process is a long-term project and will continue over time, adding that it is essential that the mechanism is put in place to monitor the implementation of agreed actions and to develop proposals for a policy and actions in this area in the future. The following action was established. A permanent interdepartmental committee served by the Department of the Environment will be established to review, to review the government policy on architecture on an ongoing basis with designated responsibility for overseeing and reporting to government on the implementation of agreed action programs. At the end of the document, a schedule of policy action was added indicating the actors responsible for the execution of the, of the actions, the main uh, governmental departments, mainly governmental departments and agencies, and a predicted time frame. However, two months after the policy has been approved, the government falls in, 2000, in June 2002. Nevertheless, the new government follow with a policy action plan and establish an interdepartment working group to coordinate the implementation uh, of, and delivery of the actions. Although some action has been executed, five years would pass since 2002 and most, most of the action plan was not delivered because of difficulties in the policy implementation process. In 2007, a new government was elected and decided to establish a working group to review the architectural policy. A steering committee and three focus groups were created, a series of public consultation meetings were held throughout the country, and even a website was created as part of the public consultation process. In 2009, a new policy was adopted, entitled Towards a Sustainable Future, the Living Quality Within the Built Environment. The review document established 15 key objectives and 45 actions, and was organized around five main teams. The new policy addresses the same issues from the first two documents. It continues to encourage and support high quality architecture, to incorporate architectural heritage in a holistic integrated manner, and developing actions which respond and promote awareness in these areas. However, it places more emphasis on sustainable development of the environment and urban design. Analyzing the progress of the policy on architecture in Ireland, the development of the policy had mainly two phases. The first phase, which lasted for six years, was mainly dedicated to public discussion of ideas and framing the policy problems, formulation of objectives and instruments, and finally the approval and adoption of the first po official policy in 2002. The second phase, uh, that which ran for seven years, was dedicated to the implementation of the policy and the execution of the policy action. However, the implementation process did not went as planned and most of the 29 actions were not implemented because of implementation problems and difficulties of coordination between the departments and the actors involved. In total, 13 years have passed since the first document in 2009 and as we can see, the implementation is not a straightforward activity. Having this said, how the new policy of 2009 deals with implementation problems? Based on the past experience and to ensure that the policy implementation is monitored with regard to the effectiveness of the actions, the policy develop, uh, developed a more careful strategy of implementation involving a greater number of stakeholders in the implementation process and delivery of actions. Beside governmental departments and state agencies, the policy also involves education, ed educational institutions, professional bodies and organizations devoted to promotion of architecture. In this sense, the following specific actions were established. 
the Department of the Environment will assign responsibility for coordination of the implementation of this policy. Implementation program and timetable for delivery in consultation with the principal stakeholders will be drawn upon. A progress report will be prepared annually for the Ministry and the Public Authority Historical Building Committee will be established. In practical terms, how did these actions were materialized? The first step was the creation of an advisor committee to assist the Department of the Environment in implement, impl implementing and developing actions of the policy over the seven years period. In support of the advisor committee, an intersectoral implementation group was created to manage aspects of the implementation of the action as required. To deliver and execute the different action, it was defined three main routes. Through stakeholders that would assist in the delivery of the policy actions, through a multi-expert panel that would be assigned to develop part of the actions, and through a direct grant aid initiatives. The advisor committee, the advisor committee is composed by six members the Royal Institute of Irish Architects, the Office of Public Works, Heritage Council, Irish Architectural Foundation, City and, City and County Manager Associations and Department of Environment. Therefore, the Advisor Committee uh, meets at least four times per year to discuss the implementation of new structures, tendering actions and direct grant aid initiatives. The Advisor Committee is co-chaired by the heads of the section with responsibility for the delivery, annual reporting and implementation of the policy inside the Department of Environment. Finally, the Advisor Committee is a high-level advisor group of stakeholders and his key function is to advise the Department on the delivery and implementation of the policy. By the other hand, the key function of the implementation group is to co-jointly manage the current development of the strategy and action relating to the implementation. In 2010, the first year of the, of the policy, the implementation group identified the 20 priority actions from the overall of 45 and to be, and begin the implementation of the policy where an, an allocation of 400,000 euros was provided for the first year. The 45 policy actions deal with four specific areas built environment research, sustainable development, policy development in urban design, and public awareness. To raise the effectiveness of the implementation process, a mix of direct and indirect actions was proposed to each thematic area. In addition, specific expertise was sourced in relation to each action being advanced. Uh, in addition, uh, a progress report is published every two years. The, the, the implementation strategy also predicts that in bringing the policy forward, it required that the policy action plan will be implemented consistently and persistently, and that institutions and individuals were made aware of progress on an ongoing basis. Therefore, the monitoring of the overall progression of the government Irish policy was resumed in an annual report in 2011 that compiles the current status of the first two years of the policy, which initiatives and action were delivered, how the annual budget has been assigned for the different partners and projects, etc. After this brief examination of the implementation process, what are the main outcomes of the Irish architectural policy? Although I do not have the time here to give you a detailed examination of the different actions delivered, I would like to point out three or four of the main achievements of the architectural policy, which for me are relevant in an, in, in an external point of view and have a direct influence in the policy effectiveness. One of the main policy outcomes was the establishment of the position of State Architect of Ireland. To underline the importance of architectural quality, has a cornerstone of national policy on the built environment, the title of principal architects in the Office of Public Works was changed to state architect and principal architect in the Office of Public Works, has a key element in the implementation of the architectural